So on this adventure of Ed episode, we are going uh, back around to Cloud Splitter. I had to park all the way down a Bison Way Trail and I walked 1.1 miles back up to where the suspension bridge goes off to the left and then Sheltawi goes off to the right. So that's where we're going, but right here is actually a suspension bridge down there. If you can see it through the trees, try to zoom. You can kind of see it going across there. All right, till next time. All over the gorge you see these rock formations. See how they're like perfectly square? Aliens.
Okay, so now I'm going up the access trail to Cloud Splitter. I just uh, met three hikers and they told me that there is nobody up there. So, uh, cool. Not going to complain about that, that's for sure. So I'll record some more when I get to the top. Thanks. This is the last climb to the top. The part everybody always freaks out about. See the rope? You basically have to use the rope to get up the side of the cliff. So I'll record some more when I get to the top. This is my camp for tonight. We are kind of at the base of uh, Cloud Splitter. You can see uh, Cloud Splitter up there. I chose this spot because it's a really awesome place and it was just so windy at the top of Cloud Splitter. Um, I just decided to go ahead and camp down here. And uh, so basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some uh, dinner and. Uh, then I'm just going to chill here. It's probably going to be dark and mm, it's 610 now, so I'm thinking around 730-ish. Oops. So basically my plans are to camp here for tonight. It's about uh, 615 or so right now. And then uh, tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and explore this area and probably wrap that up by about noon. And then uh, I'll head over to Indian Staircase and explore that area. And then uh, back to the car, that'll be kind of a loop that I've completed. Um, the wind was just really high up on top of Cloud Splitter. Um, so just better to camp down here. It's not quite as windy. A little bit of wind if you watch. You can see the uh, tarp moving there. And I've got it staked down pretty tight this time because uh, a little bit of gusts of wind here do get pretty, uh, pretty good. Also by being down here, the sunset will be right over there. It's still about, if you use the finger rule, about it says about two hours but it's never right I either have really narrow fingers or something but I'm guessing probably more in about an hour hour and a half it'll be uh it'll be dark so I'll uh, get dinner started and then I'll do a little bit more recording here's something kind of interesting uh, basically in three hours of hiking Three hours of hiking and exploring. Three hours and 36, or three hours, three minutes. 1,994 calories. So during the winter hike, I was not able to uh, show you how I cook. Uh, issues with the uh, stove. So let me kind of show you this real quick. So basically, this is an alcohol stove. Um, most most ultralight hikers they use instead of uh, alcohol, they use heat, uh, fuel line, antifreeze for an automobile. And uh, so basically, you light it. And it takes a couple minutes to get going. I'm going to go ahead and set this on there. Put it 
of hard to tell where my flames are at, but I think that it's ready to go. I got my GSI minimalist stove. And basically we set it on there. And uh till the water boils. So uh while I'm waiting on my uh homemade dehydrated chili to do its thing, I've already added the water to it. So basically I've got my evening coffee the bag that I use to as an extra seal for my dehydrated meal becomes my trash bag. You can kind of see I've put some trash in there. Uh, stevia, my coffee packet. For breakfast tomorrow, it's another little homemade idea I come up with. This is nothing more than uh, rice, or I'm sorry, oatmeal. And I added some powdered milk to it. So basically hot water, powdered milk. Oatmeal. Then I have a bag of snacks, some basically uh, peanut butter crackers. Uh, some more coffee, a protein bar, um, some cheese crackers, some uh, red hot sausages, and also some Slim Jims. Um, so basically this is what I snack on until I get to camp. Since I'm only going to be here one night, I basically have a pretty big dinner, a, a decent breakfast, and then everything else has got to be snacks. The sun is uh, definitely starting to go down. It's uh, pretty close to the horizon now for sure. It'll be setting right over there. Uh, going by the finger rule, about an hour left. Mm. That is perfect. Mm. Coffee and chili. Watching the sunset. And uh, something else I wanted to show you. If you walk over just about four steps from where my hammock is at. And then look down. This is what you see. And I know that this probably won't be able to do it justice. But that's probably a good 100 foot drop. Let's see if you can see it this way maybe. So there's the wall. See the wall over there. Definitely do not want to be sleepwalking tonight. Alright, so I did make a, a slight change to my hammock setup. Um, the angle of the tarp was just too much. I didn't really have room to get in and out. Kind of felt a little claustrophobic once I got in there. So basically, uh, since the top of this rock is mostly sand, I extended a uh, trekking pole. A lot of people have seen how this is done. That's my cell phone going off, by the way. So basically, um, you then just take and you wrap your guideline for your tarp around your pole. I have the trekking pole stuck in the ground about an inch. And then you come off with your guy wire uh, guy line and go ahead and stake it to the ground and that gives you a little bit of a pitch to the side of it I only needed one side I didn't do both both ends but uh, made it a little bit easier to get in and out of uh, the wind is actually blowing from that direction so I'm still uh, covered pretty good I think so uh, till next time starting to get a little bit of the orange sky Of 
course the camera is going to adjust for the lighting um, it's not near as bright out as the camera is making it seem it is also currently about 7.55 That light that you see is looking out my tarp at the foot end, and it's the moon rising. So uh, this was a kind of miserable night. Let me tell you what happened. The weatherman forecasted 47 degrees for the low. And at 4.30 this morning it was 33 degrees. Um, that's not a huge difference. But when I packed for this trip, I planned on it being close to 50 at night. And uh, I didn't bring my underquilt. I literally have every piece of clothing on that I brought. I also have my SOL Escape Bivy on. And uh, I don't think I slept too much. Um, around 5 I thought it was snowing. But it was actually the... Uh, the uh, frost falling off the bottom of the tarp from my breath freezing. So uh, I'm not sure what it was with the wind chill, but it got pretty, pretty cold last night. I'm not sure if you can see it, but basically on this side I have the moon setting. And on this side I have the sun rising. And you can kind of see all of the uh, frost. All right, I had to leave Cloud Splitter. Um, due to the weather, we had a really heavy frost last night. And up until I left the camp at about 10.30, the access side of Cloud Splitter was in shade and I just didn't want to risk it. I can always go back there anytime. So uh, now I'm at end end staircase. So let me zoom out. I'm actually still got a little ways to go yet. And I know this camera will not do it justice, but I have to point the camera down at about a 20 degree angle just to touch the treetops. So there's the camera is flat. There are treetops. Well, there is the infamous frog's head.
and I'm on the approach to Council Chambers. This is another popular spot. Uh, it's over by Indian Staircase. I went down to the staircase, but uh, I couldn't record because there was a couple sitting there, and I didn't want to interrupt them with my video. So I just decided to come back here. This is probably cooler, in my opinion, anyways. This is massive. They say this opening is as big as a football field. waterfall it goes way around I know this camera is not doing the height of this justice, so I found a log here. I'm going to set the camera on a log, and uh, then we'll see if it can see me or not. Yeah, it ain't going to sit there. This is probably a good 40 feet tall. To right there 40 feet so that waterfall is at least 40 feet We've had quite a bit of rain lately, but I have a feeling that my feet are about to get wet. Yuck. No way around it.
I guess they got tired of carrying it. Didn't hide it very good. So now I'm on the ledge that is across from Endon Staircase. Um, I just went to Council Chambers. So I'm kind of making my way back toward uh, Endon Arch. Some really cool rock formations though. There is always something to get into here. I'm still going along this uh, ridge line. Someone told me that the cliche get to the end, the narrower it gets. And uh, people that have like uh, closed cell foam on their packs, the guy said might might actually have troubles. We'll see. Just how narrow it gets. I'm not even sure where the end is at, to be honest with you. Let me go ahead and uh, cut the camera off because uh, it is getting harder to keep an eye on the trail and an eye on the camera. And it's only about three foot wide right now. <laughs> 